Hi everybody, I'm Giles Laval, and welcome to the first instalment of a new series for NetTuts, Python from Scratch. In this series, you'll gain a solid knowledge of the Python programming language. Over the next five episodes, we're going to go from knowing absolutely nothing about Python to having enough experience to build dynamic websites with it. If you already know some Python, feel free to join us in a later episode. Today, we're going to be choosing a version of Python, downloading and installing it, learning about different ways to write your Python code, and then making our very first Hello World program. First off, however, I'll briefly cover why it's worth your time to learn Python, and what makes it such a great language. Python has a lot of great features, but here are the three that I think are the most important. Number one is that it's a very high-level language, which means it's really easy to learn, and a lot of the more complex concepts of other programming languages are made simpler in Python. It has a very clear syntax, and it's easy to read. <clears throat> This doesn't mean it isn't powerful, though, and there's a lot you can do with Python very quickly. The second advantage of Python, I think, is that it's multi-purpose. For example, if you were to learn a language like PHP, then you'd only be building websites with that. Whereas Python can be used for scripting absolutely anything, websites included. So even though in this series we're using Python for web design, these skills will be very transferable. The final really important benefit of Python is it's got a very large standard library. And this means a lot of the things that you might want to do with Python, there's a chance that they've already been done for you, and they're included when you download Python. So you don't have to go out hunting for someone else's code and installing other libraries just to get a simple job done. This is known as the batteries included approach, and is, uh, is one, of the, one of the best things about Python. Right, so now we know why Python's so great, let's get on and use it. First, we need to head to the Python website, which is at python.org. And before we download anything, we need to choose a version. Currently, there are two active versions of Python that are being developed, Python 2 and Python 3. There's advantages to either, and I'm going to briefly cover them here. Python 2 is more compatible because it's been around for longer and more people have made other programs that work with it. So it's basically, you can think of it as the current standard. And for this, tutor this tutorial series, it's what we're going to be using. So I would say to choose Python 2 would make things a lot easier because then you know that any code that is taught in the lesson will work for you as well. Python 3 has a lot of improvements over Python 2 and it's just as good. In fact, in practice, the, with the level we're going to be going to, there's not a whole lot of difference. So it doesn't matter much either way and feel free to choose either. But if you want to keep things simple, then just go for Python 2. The only other thing I'm going to mention is that it can be quite annoying to try and switch once you've got used to one of them, because there are a few subtle differences that can be a bit annoying. So um, just something to keep in mind when you're choosing a version. Right, well, assuming we've now got a version in mind, let's go and download. There's a load of different options here, ones for the two, version 2 and version 3. We're going to download version 2 today. I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to choose this one, but get the one for... Linux or Windows if you if that's the platform you're using. One thing to note is that some of the uh, some other programs don't work with the 64-bit installs of Python. Even though it is slightly faster, for more compatibility you might want to go with the 32-bit, but that's entirely up to you. And it doesn't matter either way for what we're going to be doing in this series. Right, so click on the Python version of your choice and let it download. Right, once it's downloaded, we need to install it. So if you're on Windows, just double click the EXE, or if you're on Mac, just uh, open the disk image file, and then we can quickly run through the installer. So just uh, accept all the prompts. Right, Python is now installed. And it's important to notice that Python has installed two things. It's installed the Python IDE, called idle, and it's installed the Python shell. We're going to look at the Python shell first. If you're on Mac or Linux, then you can get to the Python shell just by opening up the terminal. And then typing Python. You can see there we're now in the Python prompt, and we can, we can run any code that we want. Python actually comes installed on Mac and on lo lots of flavors of Linux too, but it's never usually the latest version. For example, Snow Leopard comes with 2.6, so it was important to do that last step just to make sure we're all using the same version. And as you can see, here we're on 2.7. If you're on Windows, you'll, you'll have to browse to your Python install directory. 
and double click the Python shell executable file to get to the prompt like we're here now. When you're at the prompt, whatever platform you're on, you're now at a place where any Python code can be run. And you can see this by using it just like a simple calculator. If we type 1 plus 2, you can see that Python evaluates that to 3. And in essence, that's our first very simple bit of Python we've written. So uh, easy so far anyway. The other thing that Python installs is idle, which is Python's IDE. And if we just go and open up that, you should find it stalled in program files on Windows, or you can just find it in Spotlight on Mac. And this is just like the Python shell in the terminal, in that you can type any code, see it works the same, 1 plus 2, and we get 3. However, it also allows us to create Python files and run them all in one go. If we hit Control n we now get a new Python file, and here we can run any Python code. Now I'm going to introduce you to the very first bit of actual Python, which is the print function. Print simply writes a line to the screen. So if we type print, and then hello world, we've now made a Python program. We'll need to save that out somewhere. So hit Control S, and then we're just going to save this as tutorial and it's important to put on the .py extension just save that in documents that's fine and now we've got a script that can be run and if you're using idle just hit F5 and that'll be run and you can see it prints out hello world this is a good opportunity to point out one of the differences between Python 2 and 3 if you've chosen 3 then you'll need to put brackets around hello world so just do that because uh, Python between version 2 and 3 print changed from a statement into a function and we don't need to worry about what those mean yet but all, all you need to know is that it means if you're using three put curly brackets sorry uh, parentheses around it but uh, we won't do that for now because we're using 2.7 so uh, just get rid of that and save it again so personally I don't think idle's a very nice editor it's got no n line numbers it's very clunky um, so I prefer to use another text editor and this is an important thing to note Python is just plain text and you can write it wherever you want. You can write it in Notepad++ on Windows, whatever you're using on any platform. So let's go and find our tutorial file and open it up in a text editor of our choice. So if we just close that, we can see there's our tutorial file. And I'm just going to open it in COD. And you can see there we've got our file. Now we can make any changes to this. Hello everyone save that like you would to a normal text document but now how do we run it if we double click it it'll just open it well we can use the terminal or the Python shell to run any of our Python text files as well so while you can just use the shell to write out one line of code at a time you can also use it to execute files which runs lots of lines of code at once so we need to navigate to where this file is saved so I'll just make a New, Python, new tab and I will navigate to documents which is CD documents and then this is where my Python file is if I hit LS you can see that my tutorial.py is there so now all we need to do is type Python and then the name of your script if you're wondering what I did there I just hit tab which auto completes whatever you're writing in the terminal not sure if that works on Windows but if not then you can just write out the full name and then once you've got that just hit enter and it will run through the script and output it to the terminal and there we can see it has run the contents of that script so now you know the two ways of writing your Python code you can write it line by line in the terminal or you can write it in any text editor this includes the Python GUI idle or any text editor of your choice just by saving it and then writing Python and then the name of the script in the Python shell. One third option for writing your Python code is another IDE apart from idle. I know on Windows there's a great one called PyScriptor and on Windows there's a great one called PyScriptor and uh, if you just do a quick Google search for that you can find it here and download it this is what I use for when for doing Python when I'm on Windows and it hasn't been updated for a very long time but it always works with the latest version whatever you've got installed 
So just uh, just run through the installer for that, and it's a great place to write Python. You can write it and run it in one window. Um, this is a like what I was saying before. It doesn't work with it doesn't work with 64-bit Windows. So um, this is an example where you should have chosen 32-bit Python. There's a lot of other great IDEs, but I'll leave it to you to choose the one that you like the most. Right, so now we know how to create a very basic script in the terminal. Just type Python, and then it can run any code you want. So we can just do our print. And there we go, that runs. So we've now made our very first Hello World script, and you have learnt your first bit of Python. Just to finish off today's lesson, let's take it a step beyond and write some write some Python that requires more than one line, which is where Python text files come, ha come in handy. Let's open up our tutorial.py. So now let's create some Python which requires more than one line. How about having a script that asks someone for their name and then says hello to their name, not just hello world. We can do this by getting the user's input. And don't worry if this is all confusing for now, I'll explain the concepts behind this code in the next lesson. All we need to know is that we can write this code. So let's, uh, let's say that the user's input is called person's name. And we set person's name to have the value of what they input. Now this we can type raw input in Python. And this gets what they type. Now, in between parentheses, we need to put a string of text that will prompt them for their input. So let's say, please type your name and press enter. So now, the value, this word person's name, will hold whatever they typed at this point. Ah, I spelled you're wrong. So what we can do is we can do hello, person's name. And now we just hit control S to save that. And then let's run it in Python again. So let's just navigate to the documents directory and type python tutorial.py. And here we go, we get this prompt. So type your name, I'll type Giles. And it says, hello Giles, if we do it with something else. Just hit up to get the most recent command in the terminal. Let's do Joe. Hello Joe. And there we go, we've written our very first bit of Python code. Over the next lessons, we're gonna be learning how to do so much more with it. And you've seen just the very tip of the iceberg of Python's simplicity and its power. I hope you found this tutorial useful, and if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them in the comments. Please keep checking back to NetTuts for the next videos in the series where we can learn a lot more about Python, and also just for the best web development tutorials on the web. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Giles Lavelle. Goodbye.